In this video, I'm going to talk about some of the material that's in Chapter 4. And the topic of Chapter 4 and of this module is attention. In the chapter outline, you can see that, as usual, it's pretty densely packed. Um, I'll talk uh, very briefly about what uh, attention is. And then I want to focus most of our attention, no pun intended, on the topic of divided attention. So let's get started and first talk about what is attention. And it's just what it sounds like. It's the ability to focus on a specific stimuli or locations that are in our environment. There are two types of attention that this chapter focuses on. One is selective attention. And this is when we are in a situation where we have the ability to attend to one thing while ignoring all others. There's also divided attention, where we pay attention to more than one thing at the same time. We can be in a situation and have both types of attention. Sometimes we can just focus on one thing, but later be distracted by it. The issue of divided attention is something that is of interest to me because I often hear students say that they can only study when the music is playing or when the TV is on, which for me is something that is very difficult, difficult to, to do. So as I mentioned, we are going to um, spend most of our time in this, in this uh, lecture talking about divided attention. And the, the question is, can we attend to more than one thing at a time? There's some research showing that if we practice enough, we can simultaneously do two things at the same time that initially were very difficult. As research evidence, Schneider and Schifrin did a study in 1977 where they looked at people's ability to divide their attention between remembering a target and monitoring rapidly presenting stimuli. In their experiment, they had um, something called a memory set, and I'll show you a, a picture of that in a minute, that contained between one and four target characters. And then they flashed on a screen these test frames. And these test frames could contain random dot patterns, um, a target, or, or distractors. And it was up to the participant to indicate which of these test frames included this target character. And here is an example. So in this um, uh, picture here, there is this target stimulus in, in this memory set. And in this case, there is only one one uh, target character, which is three. And then you can see that the participant is presented with, with lots of different test frames, 20 of them, and they are presented very, very fast. And the target is asked which one of these test frames include this target stimulus. And of course, in this case, it is the last one that has the uh, target, target stimulus in it. So how well do participants do at this, right? This is uh, a, 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 a task that's very difficult because you're trying to, to keep this number in, in memory and you're, and you're seeing all of this very rapidly presented stimuli and you have to figure out which, which one of these test frames has the target stimulus. Well, it turns out that over time, participants got better. They're, um, there was a, a definite, as you can see in this, in this graph, um, there is definite improvement in performance over time. It turns out that about after 600 trials, so at about this mark, participants reported that this task became automatic. And I'll, I'll talk in a couple of minutes about what is meant by automatic when it comes to this type of task. The bottom line here, though, is that in this case, Practice helps us do two things at once. It, as you can see, it takes, it takes time. It takes about 600 trials in order for, uh, for practice to make us become good at doing two things at the same time. 
Let's get back to this issue of automatic processing because that's what participants reported. They reported that eventually their processing of these of these frames became automatic. Automatic processing occurs when two things happen. Um, it occurs without intention and that means that it happens automatically. We don't even we don't even notice and it only uses some of a person's cognitive resources. So research shows that divided attention becomes harder as task difficulty increases. So for example, think about, think about driving. Um, you probably know some people that cannot talk and drive very well. Of course, people can, can talk and drive. I had a friend of mine in graduate school who, whenever we started to engage in a serious conversation, when she was talking, she, she slowed down. She just couldn't drive at the same speed and hold a conversation at the same time. What does the research show about distractions while driving? There was a pretty famous study called the 100 Car Naturalistic Study. And this is a study where video recorders were placed in 100 cars. What they showed was that the risk of an accident is four times higher when using a cell phone. And in fact, in uh, that, the second study was actually one that was done in, in Toronto. But they found that in 80% of crashes and 67% of near crashes, the driver was inattentive in some way three seconds before the crash. That inattentiveness may have come from using a cell phone. Um, it may have come from the driver looking down. It may have come from the driver changing the station on his or her radio. Uh, in another study um, more recently in, in 2001, um, they did a simulated driving test. And so these were participants that were placed in, that were in a, a laboratory and placed in a, in a fake car. And they were asked to apply the brakes as quickly as possible, as soon as they saw a red light. Guess what happened? Participants that were on their cell phone missed twice as many red lights and took longer to apply the brakes. Great, so that suggests that as the task becomes more difficult, no matter how, how much we are practiced at this, we cannot do two things at the same time. And you may be thinking, okay, all right, fine. I don't, I don't hold my cell phone in my hand when I'm driving. I have it on, on speaker, so I have both hands on the wheel. Does that make a difference? Well, guess what? It turns out that you get the same results when you use a hands-free cell phone. So hopefully this will convince you that even even talking on the phone, let alone texting on the phone, is something that we that we cannot do. And so when it comes to divided attention, sure, the research shows that we can attend to two things at the same time if we practice and if that task is simple. When the task becomes more difficult, when it becomes harder, such as when we are driving, we cannot do two things at the same time. We cannot divide our attention in a way that is effective.